Hello, everyone. We are going to talk today. Uh, this is our continuation of the lectures of nutrition. Today is lecture number three, and there is three topics we will talk today. Number one, at the end, will be electrolyte balance, water balance, water and electrolyte balance. We will talk about the, the minerals, the minerals, and then at the end, we will talk uh, at the beginning, I will say, is the vitamins, are the vitamins, okay? So, in the past, we was talking about vitamins, like a coenzyme, cofactors. Uh, what are the main functions of the vitamins? Uh, you already have a very good, clear idea about that. And uh, we will talk about details of the vitamins. Especially in nutrition, we need to talk about the deficiencies, excess of vitamins. The, uh, many people are not aware that the, the deficit is already know that produce problems, but what about the excess of vitamins? So somebody is taking excess of vitamins, what can happen? So we will talk about that. Uh, you already know the vitamins basically are divided into hydrosoluble, liposoluble, and we talk about the deficiencies of basically of that but in general we will talk about the excess of these vitamins okay let's start vitamins are no caloric as well nutrients necessary for many metabolic uh nutrients necessary for many metabolic tasks and the prevention of associated deficiency diseases so one of the, this statement what is trying to tell me that is very important is that the vitamins do not have any caloric intake. You already know that proteins, they have four, for each gram, four kilocalories, for each gram of fat, nine, for each fat, fat uh, for each gram of carbs, four, for each gram of alcohol is a, a seven, is caloric giving, giving energy, but they have no nutritional, nutritional activity, that is the uh, alcohol, right? Then, uh, okay, so we already know that the vitamins do not have any caloric intake. So for each gram of vitamin is zero, gra zero, zero, zero kilocalories of, of energy for that. Okay, we got it? Okay. Oh, what is this? How many of you are taking Red Bull, Monster, Rockies, Energy, Dry, I don't know, five hours energy? When I'm driving for a long uh, for a long time, I take the five hour energy drink. Oh, okay, all right. So, do you read the label, uh, Chris? Um, I should Ever. Well, I do no. not. Do do not right. And basically, th that is very common, right? So nobody read whatever they sell it that they say okay, it's safe. So let's drink it. All right. So I will tell you something. Look at this. Niacin, niacin is uh, the vitamin B3, and the niacin is going to be giving like 150% more than you require in a day. He's 150% more. No, now let's talk about the uh, folic, uh, vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is the pyridoxine, is going to give you 2,000 times more than you require in a day. But if that is not enough, look at this, at the vitamin B12. The vitamin B12, the, you receive 8,333 times more than you require in one day. Do you know that, right? So you see here that we are taking a lot of excess of excess, excess of these vitamins, okay? So we have other like amino acids that are located there, but definitely what is going to happen? In addition to that, they they will have uh, let's see. Some of them oh they, oh, there you are, caffeine. Can you see caffeine here? They they have a lot of caffeine. So this caffeine basically is what is making you more alert, more energetic, or and the uh, and the thing that if you're taking some some fluid that is you think this is going to give you more energy, 
you're going to have more energy. So it's psychologically and uh, and the effect of the caffeine, basically what is happening in this energy, energy scenes. One cup of coffee is about 100 milligrams of caffeine. Tea is 10 times less because uh, caffeine, tein, caffeine, tein are the same family. Tein is similar as the caffeine, but it's in the tea. That is called tein. Okay. All right. So how many cup of coffee you going to have? So we have uh, 300, 400. So three cups a day is going to be of regular coffee because the the espresso has a, like it's like equivalent of three regular coffees. Express is like equivalent of three uh, regular coffees. So they call it shot, right? And they don't tell you how much caffeine caffeine you have here. Energy blend 180, 100, 180, uh, 70 milligrams. And the coffee is, one cup of coffee is about 100, uh, 100 milligrams. So how many cup of coffee? Uh, I remember I was reading that there is like half uh, two shots of cup of uh, espresso. Two shots of espresso. Two to three shots of espresso. It's like a one of these of, of these um, uh, drinks. Okay, so at the end, what is going to cause excess of vitamins? Basically, what I want you to remember is this, and, and that I put this this graphic because I want you to have some concept. Number one. Vitamins, vitamins, the majority of them cannot be stored. They are not going to be stored. They can be stored, the folic acid, the vitamin B, B, B12, basically. B12 and, and um, B12 and um, B12 and uh, folic acid, the vitamin B6, uh, no, B, what, B9, folic acid, vitamin B9 and the vitamin B12 can be stored in the liver. Uh, they can be depleted in about three months, three months. If you don't have, if you have deficiency of vitamin B12 or folic, uh, folic acid, vitamin B, folic acid, vitamin B9 is the same, they are going to be last about three months, three months, one month to three months, depends. Um, but the rest are going to go, you need, you are not going to store, basically. What happened? You, that's why you need everyday vitamins everyday vitamins you need vitamins every single day if you take an excess of vitamins that what what is going to happen is that if you have a storage of of these vitamins already vitamin b9 and b12 you're not going to store more the rest is going to be eliminated and the vitamins cannot be stored the rest basically will be eliminated through the urine so that means that every 24 hours you need you need to have supplements or uh, uh, source uh, take some vitamins. Where are the vitamins? Basically, in your salad. Uh, in the meat, there we have vitamins. In other, uh, uh, we have chicken, whatever they have vitamin. But the highest concentration, highest concentration of vitamins will be in the vegetables, vegetables and fruits. Vegetables, so that's why it's important to take vegetables and fruits and every day. So, if you take one jar of uh, vitamin C, for example, boom, all the vitamin C, the vitamin C will be eliminated because the body will be taking only the vitamin amount of vitamin C that you require in that 24 hours. You okay with that? Yes, yes. So, just answer the question. Uh, it's not very much too many studies about the excess of vitamins, for example, in regular in, 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 in persons who are taking this on a daily basis or every once in a while, whatever. So when you have excess of vitamins, in, in about three to six months are going to appear some unexplainable pains. Unexplainable pains. So explain unexplainable pains will be in the fingers, in your feet. In your, uh, you have muscle ache, or the articulations are going to be pain. So unexplainable, unexplainable uh, pain. Uh, I, I don't know, probably you want to open the car and suddenly you feel a pain on the wrist. Or you want to open the door of your house, you have pain on your fingers. Or, or you walk and suddenly you have a pain here and there. 
So, and that is going to be temporary. It's going to just disappear with a, with a few hours uh, or days, even sometimes take weeks. So be careful with that, okay? So you can answer, do vitamins provide energy? No. No. So what is the role of the vitamin in the, in the body? Okay, so please, please, I want to make a super extra concentration here. I will tell you in 30 seconds uh, what is what you need to remember forever for the rest of your life about vitamins. Okay, so we'll try to make it in simple words and short. First, before that, you need to know that it's coenzyme. Vitamins coenzymes, coenzyme. And you need to know very clear what is the concept of a coenzyme. It's the cooperation with the enzyme. So for you need to know what is an enzyme. An enzyme is a protein that is going to accelerate chemical reactions accelerate chemical reactions so the enzyme is is without the vitamin is like limping it's like a slowing it's not going to be effective you need he needs a helper in order to go full action so that is an enzyme enzyme is going to accelerate enzyme accelerate chemical reactions and the strong big helper will be the vita the vitamins is that clear Yes. Okay. Second, why do we need and why do we need these uh, chemical reactions for everything? Right. Remember, we was telling how many chemical reactions we have in our body per second, right? So it's a huge, huge number. It's a big number. You cannot even imagine how much is one quadrillion, quadrillion, right? It's one thousand quadrillion chemical reactions per second. And can you tell? how much vitamins are going to be required all over the body. All, so it's not going to be just in the blood, it's going to be in every single cell, from the follicle of your hair, to your nail, to the intestines, to the heart, to the pancreas, whatever you think. All these hundred trillion cells, they need, uh, they need to do this process every second, so, uh, in total, right? Okay, so now, one of the functions of this is to, why we need energy for, we need energy for, for ATPs, to create ATPs, correct? We need yes. to, and for metabolism, metabolism, metabolism. So we have ATP, well, metabolism, ATP is part of the metabolism, and what about cell division? Cell division, cell division. And that's what I want to make emphasis right now, cell division. So all the chemical reactions, for example, and let's see, the amylase with the carbohydrates, when you eat in the bolus, they, that is <coughs> enzyme. And enzymes, they need, they need co coenzymes. Okay? So the, li the protease, the, the, um, the amylase, the lipase, all these guys, <coughs> they, need to <coughs> they need to have uh, energy. And the chemical reactions and for that they need vitamins the coagulation factors huge important coagulation factors the secondary hemostasia that is the one who produces in the liver coagulation factors to produce fibrin so in order to have fibrin you have a sequence reactions that need to happen before if one of these reactions previously ha are not happening fibrin is not going to be formed so for chem these chemical reactions is going to participate, <clears throat> for example, the vitamin K, right? And some uh, cofactors uh, co like calcium. So they are going to be always participating in all chemical reactions. But I want to focus, as I mentioned in a few moments ago, it's about cell division, cell division, cell division, cell division. Cell division is just not just like cut an apple in half. No. <laughs> Cell division is going to be much more, you already know one, more than that, right? It's not like a lemon or an apple or potato in half. No, it's more than that. So you need to realize that, that in order to the cell ha make this, they have a lot of chemical reactions involved in that. In the cell division, in the duplication of the DNA, we have chemical reactions. We need vitamin for that. So the separation of the cells, 
these separations are going to be happen for for free no there are chemical reactions that are going to make that separate from one side to another side and that uh pushing and this person who is helping to that is the are the vitamins so as a consequence of that what then if we don't have vitamins if we don't have vitamins all these chemical reactions are going to be delayed or not effective and what happened with the cell division what happened with the reproduction of the cell are going to be delayed or maybe not, not happen you okay with that yes. yes okay that is number two number three i want you to know that your body is a very dynamic uh, structure very dynamic our bodies are, are very dynamic so what does it mean very dynamic very dynamic means that everything is doing something all the time all the time so there's all uh, functions that are going to happen every all the time no stop your body is not you see the skin your skin said oh nothing is happening no something is happening now so the cells who are in the outer layer of the skin are going to are slough off so that's why you have this fa facial whatever right so they accelerate the but mechanical forces they are going to scrap the outer layer of the skin the cornea but these cells they need to be replaced so where is the cornea from the cells who from the epidermis layers that come in below they are going to replace the corneal cells for new for new corneal cells and the layer that is below that is going to be replaced by the layer that is under that and and so on right so it's going to be a continuous continuous cell division they need vitamins they need energy vitamins and energy so now your skin your mucus any part of the body bones eggs everything everything is need to be in continuous repair and maintenance right repair and maintenance so what happens if you don't maintain your house and you stop to repair things in your house what happened you start to get down right so start to i mean what i mean is going to be destroyed or fall down okay okay with that now yes so what happened with the vitamins and you can tell the idea already right if you don't have enough vitamins this cell division is going to delay or most likely it will not happen but meantime the tissues on the on the in every part of the body they need to be repaired maintained and replaced and there's half a some some speed to replace right there is some time they they need they take some time to replace the the tissue but if you cannot replace because your cell division is poor it's not far as fast would be why because you don't have the enough vitamins your tissue start to decay and that's why you start to have lesions all over the all your all over your body skin the mucus you have ulcers because those ulcers is not because a bacteria or, or an injury. It's because the cells will not be able to replace the, the cells who are gone fast enough. So you start to create this decontinuation of the skin. And that basically happens when you have low levels of vitamins. We understand the concept. We, we got that? Yes. Okay. So now how you can apply this and how you can make it useful so you need to check as a nurse you need to check the the nutrition level of the patient so you already know in the previous class how to recognize a person who are very well nourished correct signs of well nutrition and signs of malnutrition right so that is telling you that the patient is not going for example that you one of the scenes that are going to affect uh, uh, basically all the time are going to be the skin the skin the skin you need to see the skin the skin is one of the uh areas that you can tell uh, the efficiency of vitamins right away okay the skin ulcers where mostly around the mouth why why do you think it here the okay i will show you something this kylosis so calosis. why do you think it's this area more than the rest because everything is skin because when you, huh? why um, go ahead. sorry go ahead 
because when you open your mouth, that corner is actually under strong mechanical forces. So that's why people with a with age, this is area start to have wrinkles, because it's an area of a lot of 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 action. You already you open and eating. When you eating, you you talk whatever. You move in your mouth, and this corner is the one who is suffering, uh, having most of the mechanical effort from the upper and the lower so it's like pulling up pulling down in the same area so that is the stress all the time and that is going to be replaced need to be replaced faster than others areas of the of the skin so if you have deficiency the first area you will notice that one of the first areas going this this thing in your a corner of your mouth lips it's called calosis calosis okay with that the this is vitamin deficiency Okay, all right, so let's start. The fish, okay, so one thing. So we have vitamin A, we have vitamin B, C, uh, we have vitamin K. And the first, what, okay, question. What was the first vitamin that was discovered? <laughs> what was the first vitamin discovered? Or the discovery? D. Which one? Huh? C. Vitamin A. What is the second, the second vitamin that was discovered? Vitamin B. Exactly. That's why they come <laughs> in the world. Okay. That's why they come in. They, they come in the world. The vitamin A, then B, then C, then E, then E. They, they say so much. They say. They, I, I mean, somebody said, okay, why we following the the alphabet? So they start to just put other names, but uh, yeah. So we have vitamin A, complex B, all complex B. What is complex B? Complex B, just remember for now, forever. Complex B is not like it's a, it's not like a most potent. It's not like people think it's more potent vitamin B. It's, it's far away from that. From the, it's real. So complex B is the group of all the vitamin B. So we have vitamin B1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 12. So that is complex B. So when you see complex B, they have all the types of vitamin B. It's not like that vitamin B is stronger than others. Okay? All right. So that is where is uh, the vitamins. And the point I was mentioned this is this. This is very important. So please, please, please. Basically, you will not find, you will not find a specific and unique deficiency of vitamins in a person. So when you find a, a malnourished person or with malnutrition or malnutrition or desnutrition, you will not find only one type of vitamin deficiency. Is going to be always the major. I will say ninety-nine percent. The majority of them will be a deficiency of multiple vitamins. Multiple, more than one vitamin. And why I mention that? Because in this class you will learn the deficiency of specifically of each of these vitamins. Okay, each of them. For example, vitamin A produce night the night blindness for example right so for example vitamin c produce less collagen so many 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 signs different signs and symptoms and we are going to talk individually for each of them but in reality you will not find deficiency of only one vitamin but multiple vitamins so that means and that's what is making it a little bit difficult that the deficiency of vitamins is an overlap of many, many vitamins that are deficient in the body. It's not going to be only just one sign and symptom. You okay with that? Is that clear what I said? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm giving you the frame because that is what... And anytime you have a deficit of vitamins, what you're going to do? You need to use that word very much a lot. What are you going to do? Oh, you don't do anything. Oh, you have vitamin deficiency. Good, go home. 
um, get like a supplement to take. Exactly. Okay. So that word you we use to use is very often, okay? Very often because you're going to see that very often. You need to have supplements, supplements, vita vitamin or uh, vitamin supplements, vitamin supplements, vitamin supplements. So in order to uh, fight against the deficiency of those vitamins, first of all, is the a balanced diet, right? Balanced diet. We are in nutrition. Balanced diet. You need to have a balanced diet, a balanced diet, and then you go. You can. Because in the balanced diet you have all the vitamins, yes or no? Do you, tell me if you have a balanced diet, do you need uh, uh, eat uh, vitamins in the market or whatever? The answer is no. It's obvious, right? A balanced diet means all the ingredients, all the components, but your nutrition is uh, uh, is there. Okay, you don't need more. But some people like you know this OTC over the counter medications is a multi multi billion billion uh, uh, market industry so many people work on that and they want just to show that it is needed so that's why otis is full of vitamins new medications what the for because they are worried about your health no <laughs> not necessary okay let's talk about that another time okay so what is the role of the vitamin in the body so is to support metabolic processes right to participate in enzymatic reactions okay perfect let's not talk more about that we already mentioned what are the most common deficiencies are associated with so tell me when some of them are going to mention some of you um, and you will you will try to find an example in your daily life activity if you know something etc Okay, let's talk about malabsorption. So, this malabsorption, uh, malabsorption means poor absorption. Okay, so you can write down there, malabsorption is poor, poor absorption. And this poor absorption, it could be for any of the nutrients, but most commonly happen because of the no absorption of fat. Fat absorption is going to be diminished. Fat absorption, malabsorption. This malabsorption is characterized because your fecal material, your stools, your poo poo, is basically fat. It's basically fat. How do you recognize this poo poo is fat? Because it's totally very, very yellow. Very yellow. Yellow, yellow, dark. Yellow, yellow. And it's a mass. It's not a form a stool because of the fat. Too much fat, right? Too much fat, you cannot form the stool. Fat is fat fat and the fat is going to be yellow uh, it's going to be the form of diarrhea and lead into uh, that means that you didn't absorb fat why are we are talking about what what you're talking about so they're absorbing fat so that means that uh, remember that we have the fat soluble vitamins yes or no remember that yes yes Dr. G fat soluble vitamin and the fat soluble thank you fat soluble vitamins is going to be the vitamin a what else vitamin d e and k correct excellent so fadic remember fadic and these vitamins will not be absorbed so i have in malabsorption why because basically you don't have you don't produce enough bile acids i didn't say bile i said bile acids that's what i said bile acid bile acid bile acid bile acid bile acid bile acid is the uh the one who is in charge of the emulsification right if you cannot emulsify the fat that you're eating the digestion is going to be very inefficient so you cannot absorb so that's why fat go into the intestines and produce this diarrhea called malabsorption you okay with that another cause if you have problems with pancreas so you have a good bile acids in this case but you have pure, uh, low or poor amount of lipase coming from the pancreatic use you have some problems in the pancreas and that can lead into malabsorption another cause of malabsorption is going to be resection of the intestine so that is your surgery surgery i'm not going to go too much about that okay so that is absorption so malabsorption will basically do the 
lack of absorption of fat. Okay? And just, if you have experience with a malabsorption, you see somebody, the smell is very intense. I mean, you want just to run away, right? You want to open everything. But the windows, everything, because it's very seriously strong. Uh, malabsorption. Okay. Alcoholism. Somebody can help me with that. <laughs> Somebody can help me. I'm alcoholic. So what is going to happen? Someone who abuses alcohol? Oh, it looks like you did copy it. Okay, so I'm going to make it available. Um, if you okay. if you drink too much alcohol, your liver can be damaged, and then that could also affect um, the bile production. Yes. What about what about what about if you give me? I'm alcoholic, okay, Hillary. I'm an alcoholic, okay. And you put me in front of me a bottle of vodka versus a New York steak. So and you tell me you can select only one thing. What I will, what I, which one are we going to pick up? Probably the alcohol. The alcohol, right? So, basically, these these people, these uh, patients, will not be uh, will sacrifice their nutrition because of the alcohol, right? And they don't have money for anything else, so prefer to eat uh, uh, to drink alcohol rather than buy a, a expensive uh, piece of, of meat, right? Yes or no? So alcoholism can lead into malnourishment. Yes or no? But tell me, uh, why do you think it's getting weight? So alcoholics are very thin all the time, no? They can be heavy, right? Yeah. Why? Can. Because alcohol have seven kilocalories per gram. Seven kilo, kilo, kilocalories per gram. For example, let's calculate something. I just came to my head. Uh, vodka, for example, is about 42% alcohol, right? Right? So uh, I, let's, make it, let's put it 40%. And the bottle is going to have 750 ml fluid. So let's make it a, 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 a one, okay, seven, a 1,000. I drink a little bit more. Okay, 1,000. So how much is that in grams? In grams will be one bottle. Of, okay, so if I have, if I have for, uh, if I have 40, 40 grams in one liter, right? Right or no? Yes. Forty grams. I, Forty grams in one thousand ml. Right. So that means forty grams. So four grams in hundred. Uh, one gram in ten. Every 10, I have one gram of alcohol. So a total, I have 40 grams. Okay, 40 grams. 40 grams multiplied by four. How much is that? That is 160. Seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, seven. Uh, how much? 70, right? 70 or? You said 40 grams, and then it should be times by seven for kilocalories, correct? 280. 280. Excellent. 280 kilocalories. So basically, they take a one bottle is 200, 300 kilograms, kilo, kilo, kilocalories. So that is enough to, uh, if you drink constantly, you can increase kilocalories, and that is what is making you gain weight. Okay, so let's keep going. Medications. Medications can produce a deficiency of uh, vitamin or vitamins yes for example we have um you can write down this when you take isoniazide for tuberculosis inh that is will be the de will deplete the the levels of vitamin b6 they're going to deplete the vitamin b6 medications can deplete the vitamin b6 for example Hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is the kidney is not working, 
So what problem we have there is vitamin D deficiency, yes or no? Vitamin D, yes or no? Pardon and what that huh? Why? Why, why, why are you receiving hemodialysis? Somebody? Guys, if you're not going to answer, I'm not going to be able to finish the class, huh? Please. Okay, hemodialysis, total parental nutrition, food fadism, inborn error of metabolism, okay? All right, so develop, uh, we have here, uh, we have the vitamin deficiency will develop uh, progressively. One of the signs and symptoms is glossitis. Glossitis, you have the red tongue. Kalosis is the damage on the corner of your mouth. Uh, we have the vitamins we discovered in 1900s. And there is a recommendation of daily taking vitamins every day. And the best do to do this is your balanced diet. Vitamin <coughs> is an organic substance because carbon and hydrogen and are called micro micronutrients. So we need in a small amounts, as we already know. Functions of vitamins will be uh, metabolism, enzymes and coenzymes. So chemical reactions we already mentioned. <coughs> Uh, all co all, any vitamin can be a coenzyme. We have fat soluble vitamins, we have FADEC, um, we have the other one is the fat and the, the hydrosoluble vitamins. Hydrosoluble vitamins. These hydrosoluble vitamins need they need to be replaced every single day. Fat soluble, they can they can be is easier to pass the cell membrane because the cell membrane is basically phospholipids and fat on fat they can mix they don't reject each other so they can pass easily. But the vitamin B and C, uh, some the majority of vitamin B are hydrosoluble so they will be eliminated very easy because dilute in the water and in, and they go out. So that's why we need every single day a, a supply of, of new and more vitamins. Nutrients found to be essential for life. Uh, vitamins do not provide energy. We talk about that. Enzymes, antioxidants. Antioxidants, what is antioxidant? Okay, antioxidant will be just uh, to get rid of the free radicals. You already know what the free radicals. We have uh, vitamin A and vitamin D are going to work as a function, as a hormones. Vitamin A, because it's known that the vitamin A, besides that give the uh, night blinded, they, can, uh, they are going to express some genes. So one of the gene expression uh, that is important. So that means that one gene is sleeping and then suddenly it starts to function, they require vitamin A. So basically vitamin A works as an hormone in every single cell of the body. And the vitamin D, the vitamin D that participate uh, on the regulation of calcium in the body. Okay, so we have now 13, 13 vitamins are known. The vitamin we are going to talk one by one. And uh, we have vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B9, B12, C, D, E, and K. What is difficult, what is going to be a little bit challenging for all of you is to memorize not only the, the letters. You need to know what is doing, and that's what is coming now. What is the name of the vitamin? The name, you need to memorize the name and the letter of the vitamin. And you need to remember what is happening when you have the deficit of that vitamin or you have the excess of that vitamin. And for this, we have certain vitamins. So you need to have certain names, certain deficiency signs and symptoms. And that is what is going to be next quiz.
Vitamin divided in water soluble and fat soluble. Water soluble, we have uh, no B complex, B complex. So, and the fat soluble, we have the ADIC, ADIC, FADIC, A, D, E, and K. So just remember FADIC, the rest are going to be water soluble. If you see here, uh, uh, these water soluble vitamins, vitamin C is to repair tissue. We have energy metabolism, that means ATPs. They are going to be used for hematopoiesis, for cell division, cell division. Cell division not only for the red blood cells, they can happen cell division in all, about, all your body. So vitamin B, complex B, complex B is all the group of vitamins, B. And this efficiency, what mostly are going to affect these two things, the formation of ATPs, and the regeneration or maintenance and repair of the tissue. So that is basically what I want you to remember about this complex B. And these deficiencies are going to be seen by lesions in the skin and mucus. And you can he you, you hear about in the past, you have deficiency of vitamin B12, right? They can lead into anemia. Okay, so let's start. Uh, talk about the most common vitamin deficiencies is the ADEC, the vitamin A, D, E, and K. Okay, so let's have 10 minutes break, and then I'm going to start uh, with a, that was basically an introduction. Please, uh, for next uh, hour, I would like you, your, I will really be very grateful for your participation and communication from all of you. Okay, all of you. I don't want anybody to keep silence. I want everybody to talk somehow, say, mm, uh, yes, just by courtesy, even. Okay, all right. So, see you then. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sure. So, change the chip when you're coming back. <laughs> I will be here at 11.47, 11.47, 11.47.
Hello. Hello. So everybody, please, cameras. Okay. So this lecture is going to demand on you a lot of uh, a lot of uh, memorization. Huh? So that's what is making this class a little bit difficult. There's a lot of names. I'm not trying to push too many scenes. Uh, so I'm going to remark what is important. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Let's ex let's start with the vitamin A. That is part of the FADEC, right? Vitamin A, D, E, and K. The other name of vitamin A is the retinoid. Retino. Retino. Retinoid or retinoic acid. Retinoic acid. There is some medication that is called the isotretinoin. The isotretinoin. And this isotretinoin is basically vitamin A that is used to uh, treat the acne. Okay, this acne are going to be used as isotretinoin. That is a derivative of vitamin A. So probably some of you already know uh, somebody is taking this uh, medication that is basically vitamin A. Okay, so for the exam you need to know retinoic acid, retinol, vitamin A, isotretinoin are of vitamin A, okay? Uh, isotretinoin is not in the nature, it's being made, it's a derivative of vitamin A, but it's used for, for acne. And that is very, very NCLEX, very healthy, okay? Isotretinoin, basically when somebody's having this treatment with, with this uh, medication, they have suicidal ideas, suicidal ideas. So that's why I want to remark from the very beginning, isotretinoin, okay? So they need to be under observation all the time. Okay, so uh, we have other sources that is the carotene, 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 carotene. This carotene is coming from the word carrots, right? So they are going to be in the, in, in carrots. Carotene is not a vitamin A, it's a pro-vitamin A. So it's going to be processed, and it's then it's by the body is going to be processed as vitamin A. Okay, all right. So uh, for this, we need to remember that the main functions of the of this vitamin will be the uh, for vision, the rods. We have the rods and the and the cones, right? Remember, rods and cones. Rods contain a substance called the rhodopsin. And what does me to what is doing this with the vitamin A? Vitamin A, vitamin A regenerate or produce this rhodopsin, that is part of the, is a substance that is in the rod receptors. Rod receptors. The rod receptors, as you remember, cones, co co colors. Rod is for night vision, so it's like you using a rod to walk on the on the darkness. And just to remember, the rods are for night vision. Okay, so you can tell me now if you have deficiency of vitamin A, you have deficiency of vitamin A, that, that can cause night blindness. Night blindness. Question for the exam. Night blindness. Okay, the requirements. Uh, we are not going to uh, talk about numbers. I'm not going to ask you to memorize numbers. Uh, the requirements is going to be about 1,000 micrograms per day. So it's about 15,000 units of vitamin A. So the excess of vitamin A is going to produce some problems. Uh, the problems are, uh, especially in, during pregnancy. So a pregnant, when they're doing her diet, they need to be a balanced diet. And what they need to know, how, how they know they need to eat, just listen to your body. 
uh, pregnant, we have millions of years of evolution, or at least hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, and uh, and the body is a uh, your body knows what they need. So if you are have a hungry for some or for so, some other, it's because in, by instinct your your body knows what is required for the nutrition that you require for your pregnancy. Excess of vitamin A in pregnancy can cause uh, cleft palate, some deformities of the eyes uh, between the facial bones, special facial bones. So one of these is the cleft, uh, cleft lip and cleft palate. Okay, cleft palate. Can you imagine a baby born with a cleft lip or cleft palate? They can clo they cannot close the the, the, the mouth very uh, 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 normally. As a consequence, imagine when the baby is going to take milk, right? So the milk is going to be all over, cannot be holding in the oropharynx, and produce can produce malnourishment on the on the kid. So don't take excess of vitamin A. So that's why I'm telling you. Uh, listen to your body. What, whatever you you need, this is what basically you need to eat. Okay. All right. So, in more in detail. Oh, there you are. I saw tretinoin. There is here. Okay. Uh, the serophthalmia, defi deficiency serophthalmia, dry, uh, dry, dry eye, serostomy, dry skin, uh, called cirrhosis. Serophthalmia, dry eye, serostomy, dry skin. Open eyes, open ears with this owl and this head. Okay? All right. So you can tell when you go to Walgreens, Walmart, CVS, whatever, you have creams. Creams basically are for skin. Some creams are, you see, basically this, the, these creams contain vitamin A, right? They contain vitamin E too, right? Vitamin C. And all th all these are going to contribute to the uh, to the skin, uh, uh, the skin maintenance of the skin. Okay. Vitamin A deficiency aggravates ty thyroid dysfunctions, cause iodine deficient diet. So, again, the vitamin D, in addition to that, they can produce problems with uh, can cause hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism. So. Basically, vitamin A is going to consider as a hormone. Why? Because they are going to participate in the control of the balance of the thyroid gland function. Okay, thyroid gland function, vitamin A. The other vitamin that is considered a hormone is the vitamin D. We will see that in the next slides. All right, so toxicity levels, symptoms are going to be staining of the skin, a yellow-orange color, but otherwise benign. So what happened with this? So I will tell you some trick. When you go, one trick, just to remember about this vitamin A, especially when you eat, when you go to the beach, you want to have a tan of your skin, very, very nice, different from others, and uh, last longer. You, you can eat uh, carrots. Carrots. Carrots contain a lot of carotene that is a pro-vitamin A. So basically will be transformed into vitamin A in the body. And that is giving you like an orange crispy color of your skin. And it's going to last longer. So just to remember that toxicity levels, it's not toxic, but it's benign and it's going to be temporary, can stain the skin of yellow orange color. Okay? All right. Uh, skin changes are mostly marked, can be in the palms, in the soles, but supposed to be in the uh, white areas of the sclera. So they are going to be kind of a, a little bit more uh, like orange color. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's it. All right. So any question about vitamin A? No, sir. Okay. Yes. Yes. Question? No, oh. no questions. Oh, okay. So then we have the vitamin D. Vitamin D, the other name you need to remember is the colicalciferol. 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 This is the vitamin D. It's a 1, 125, hydroxypatite, whatever. So vitamin, vitamin D, colicalciferol. The vitamin sources, vitamin D sources, as we mentioned before, will be the exposure of the skin to the sunlight. So vitamin D is formed based on that. So what is the source? What is the material that the skin is used to produce vitamin D when this 
it's exposed to the sunlight is cholesterol, cholesterol. That is called, remember, cole calcifero. That's what is coming the word, cole, because they need cholesterol to be produced vitamin D. That is one. The other source of vitamin D will be diet, your diet. So you see milk, for example, milk have calcium and vitamin vitamin D already. So they put in the advertisement vitamin D and calcium. No, why, why they need? So the milk already have vitamin D and calcium. They, don't, they didn't put extra calcium or extra vitamin D. It's the milk. Milk contain already high amounts of calcium and vitamin D. So this vitamin two sources, the two sources, one from the diet will be absorbed by the intestines and they go and run through the bloodstream. And the vitamin D that is created under the skin will be absorbed by the vessels and go into the blood. So at the end, all the sources of vitamin D are being running through the bloodstream. The importance about this is that these vitamins from diet and from your own uh, production are going to be not working yet. They're inactive. They're not active yet. So they, they are not going to make the function that they are required for. And who who activate the vitamin D? The one who activate the vitamin D are the kidneys. Kidneys. Remember, fresh and red, fresh and red, red, right? Renin, erythropoietin, and vitamin D, vitamin D. So that is where how the vitamin D will be activated. Will be activated. The functions of the vitamin D is to promote the absorption of calcium, absorption of calcium and contribute to the bone mineralization. Mineralization, in other words, means the deposit of calcium into the bones, okay? So, but the primary function of the vitamin D is the absorption of calcium, absorption of calcium. Then this, uh, that promotes, that promotes mineralization. That means the high levels of calcium in blood activate, activate the calcitonin from the thyroid gland that as a consequence activate the osteoblast and the osteoblast make the the excess of calcium from the uh, put, from the blood put it back put it into the bone so you already have normal value of calcium okay all right so we are okay with that yes yes sir yes. the deficiency of vitamin d thank you uh Especially, you will see it's very more it's more common in winter time. On those areas where you have six months night, six months day, six months day, six months night. So basically, you need to do a lot of uh, supplements of vitamin D. And this winter is because you don't have the, the sunlight exposure, right? And they can produce the demineralization. Okay. The demineralization are going to be the, the, the less calcium will be able to for the bones. And you know, the bones is one of the most active systems in the body. Your bone is repairing, maintaining, changing shape according to your physical activity for you, etc. So every single second, the bone is, is are having a work to do. Repair, maintenance, and uh, actually a deposit of calcium. So here we have the deficiencies that you need to remember for this is the rickets disease and osteomalacia. Rickets disease and osteomalacia. So please, please don't get confused with marasmus and quashacor. Marasmus and quashacor is deficiency of proteins, 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 proteins. This doesn't, rickets and osteomalacia, nothing to do with the proteins. Rickets and osteomalacia are related to the calcium, calcium. Calcium rickets disease will be in children and osteomalacia in adults. So you can tell that in adults they can produce osteoporosis. Lack of vitamin D, there is no absorption of calcium, the bone density will be decreased. Okay? All right, so uh, rickets disease, you will see of the characteristics is the bowing of the lower extremities, bowing. Can you see the femur here? This femur is bended. Can you see this? Why is that? Because the baby at the beginning with the vitamin D, first of all, the head, the arms, the thorax, the abdomen are going to start gaining weight, okay? Getting bigger and weight. So the, the baby, when they start to walk, 
the bones are weak um, and all the weight of the upper portion of the body will be uh, sustainable uh, are going to be uh, projected to the femur so the femur is weak and the femur with the weight of the upper portion of the body will start to bend so that's why at the end they have this appearance of lower extremities can you see this okay that is the bowing of the lower extremities by rickets osteomalacia uh, people are more prone to have fractures uh, they, uh, when it's more severe it's called osteoporosis so that means any fracture can happen at any time toxicity levels we have hypercalcemia 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 this hyper hypercalcemia produce uh, uh, uh okay i'm going to talk about hypercalcemia flaxic muscles hypocalcemia produce tetany that is in muscles okay muscles so wait a minute wait a minute you said muscles but we were talking about bones right but remember calcium is not only needed for bones remember this remember this sodium yes calcium potassium magnesium cal uh, chloride right so calcium is needed for muscle contraction giant cat remember that calcium okay so the calcium are going to be when you have uh, hypercalcemia hypercalcemia the the uh, basically the 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 contraction is going to be mostly located here so what is happening is that uh, what happening is that uh, uh, what happening is that this portion of the potassium the down the hill here are going to longer time longer time so that's why it's going to be a uh, flaxic muscles but in case of hypocalcemia hypocalcemia you will say that there is no contraction but no what happened is to eat that the, the body initiate the contraction because you have low calcium is going to enter a lot of sodium a lot of sodium that is going to initiate but it's going to get stuck here because there is not enough calcium to continue the contract to uh, continue with the relaxation so what happened the contraction is stuck here so that's why you have hypocalcemia you have tetany tetany okay is it yeah. clear or not? okay so clear. you have to remember hypercalcemia flaxing muscles hypocalcemia tetany the detrusor muscle chepostock muscle so there's many signs and symptoms that you need to ask in your um med search by the way all right so we have vitamin fadic right vitamin a we already know vitamin d and now let's talk about the vitamin e vitamin e vitamin e the other name that you must remember is the tocopherol 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 so tocopherol the vitamin e basically is an antioxidant 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 means you're fighting against the free radicals the free radicals just to pay your attention here free radicals excess of free radicals make you old you want to you want to get old faster you want to get old faster no right okay so for uh people who smoke for it for a lot or people who are alcoholic tell me these people get older faster or no yes yes we know that right so why because these substances produce inflammation that is related to the amount of, of free radicals that are produced in the body what is doing the free radicals free radicals de destroy the cells any system are all things are going to be the cells are going to have this uh, increase of free radicals that produce the destruction of cells and the body is pushed to renew these cells but you know remember that that we talk in, in bioscience the more the each time that the cell are going to reproduce the telomeres 
of the chromosomes are going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. And the short, the short, the shorter, the telomeres that represent that is going to uh, translate into uh, get older faster. Okay, so we don't. So that's why we want to have a good amount of antioxidants. Antioxidants are the broom that sweep out the free radical from the cells. One example that can tell you about vitamin E or tocopherol is anemia. They can produce anemia anemia, hemolytic anemia, hemolytic anemia, hemolytic anemia. Why? Because if you have too many free radicals in your body, these free radicals will be attached to the red blood cells. And the red blood cells, what happened? They are going to be destroyed. Okay, so that were, uh, and that is not like one or two, it's hemolytic anemia. It could be massive. They can lead you in a, into anemia. So one of the causes of anemia will be deficiency of vitamin E, vitamin E, vitamin E. You okay with that? So for NCLEX and HESI, you need to remember this. So that's why NCLEX and HESI is telling you this. If somebody have anemia, if so NCLEX and HESI, uh, if somebody have anemia, you cannot treat the anemia without knowing what is the cause. You cannot treat any anemia without knowing the cause. Oh, somebody told me, my neighbor told me, oh, this is good for anemia. What kind of rationale is that, right? That is good for anemia, but there's many more things to do. What, what about if you said, okay, so iron is good for anemia, or vitamin B12 is good for anemia, or folic acid is good for anemia. So I drink that, but you take that, but the problem is not that. The problem will be, for example, deficiency of vitamin E. Are you okay with that? So that's why they need to investigate, first of all, what is the cause of an anemia in order to receive the treatment. All right, so uh, toxic, uh, toxic symptoms of vitamin E. I will give you an example. A, a person who are going into surgery, could be a minor surgery, could be a major surgery, surgery in general, they recommend you to stop take vitamin E at least three to four days before the surgery. Why? Because the vitamin E, vitamin E, so they give you some, uh, if they give you some anticoagulants, anticoagulants like warfarin or coumadin, they're going to basically, uh, the vitamin E are going to decrease the needs of warfarin. Decrease the needs of warfarin. So you still need warfarin, but in lower dose. So in other words, vitamin E potentiate the activity of the warfarin. So the needs that of warfarin that are required during or after, uh, after surgery is are going to be lower. So if you don't do that, the warfarin in therapeutic levels that are given to you are going to be too high and that can produce risk for bleeding. Where are the, um, the vitamin E? We have sunflower oil, palm oil, leafy fruits, veggies. So basically in all vegetables and fruits, that is where we have vitamin E. Remember uh, which kind of products we have high high amount of antioxidants, including the vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin A2, so, somehow. So vitamin E. So how you can recognize uh, part of your diet contain contains a a lot of antioxidants, or you cannot, or we cannot recognize. Like what it, bright colored uh, bright vegetables. Colors, excellent. Bright colors. So everything that is dark color, bright, dark bright, that is have high content, high content of antioxidants. For example, berries, right? Cranberries, raspberries. So bright, intense colors. The darker, the best. Contain uh, a lot of of, of these antioxidants. Okay. Let's talk about the vitamin K. 
Vitamin K is called vitamin K, so there is no other names there. So the vitamin K, as you know, is having two sources, right? The diet and the flora. The flora, the normal flora, is composed by 400 different species, species of bacteria located in the large intestine. So what they are eating, they are eating the cellulose. What is the cellulose? The vegetables, the fiber. So all these fruits and vegetables, they contain fiber, that is cellulose. So this cellulose is not digestible by the, by the body, and this fiber will be doing what? They are going to be the food for the bacteria. So we are helping the bacteria, and the bacteria in exchange, they, are, they don't know what they are, but they are helping us. They are going to produce vitamin K. They produce vitamin K. And the vitamin K is a co-factor, a co-sorry, co-enzyme for the uh, coagulation factors. I'm going to ask that. So you, for now, forever, you need to remember that, please. So because I, and when I ask here and there, you forgot about what is doing the vitamin K. And the vitamin K is a coenzyme that is helping to for the formation of fibrin. Fibrin. For this, you need to remember the coagulation process. Coagulation process, clot or thrombus is equal to say red blood cells plus uh, plus platelet plus fibrin. So fibrin is the secondary hemostasia, platelet is the primary hemostasia, and the fibrin is a product of of many reactions that occur in the liver. These reactions, <coughs> these reactions to produce fibrin that is important for the coagulation process is important, they need a coenzyme called vitamin K. If you have deficiency of vitamin K, you have risk for bleeding, risk for bleeding. We okay with that? Yes. Okay, the vitamin, vitamin K, Deficiency can uh, produce bleeding, and one of the of the signs will be bruising, echemosis, 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 or echemosis, e e e echemosis. I think is the right way. Echemosis, echemosis are bruises. So deficiency of vitamin K, vitamin K. Those that's why a newborn, if you have a baby, they they receive an injection on the thigh. Do you notice that? They receive an injection on the thigh. Why? Because they are giving vitamin K. Why they're giving vitamin K? Because the flora of the newborn is not established completely until six months. After six months, the flora is being established in the newborn. Before that, if you don't have this uh, flora, you have deficiency of vitamin K. So increase your risk for bleeding. So that's why they provide or inject vitamin K to the newborn. Sources will be uh, the kale, the spinach, the chart, chart, all these leaves that are uh, green leaves, long leaves, are going to have this vitamin K. Uh, I will tell you this, iodine, they contain iodine too, that is a mineral. Okay, especially the green leaf, leaf vegetables. So here we have the coagulation cascade. If you see here, this is the liver. All this is in the liver. All this is the liver. This is the liver. That is happening in the liver. In the liver, we have different factors, right? So factor uh, 12, so there's certain reactions, but there are 12, 12 factors. Pro uh, 11, for example, to, to, to 9, then to 10 somewhere is there. It's not completely showing. But there are going to be 11, 10, 9, 8, 6, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and two and one is going to be the fibrin. So that is where, and, and all these, they are going to, in some parts, parts are going to need vitamin K. And some areas they need calcium. Can you see here calcium? Calcium is a cofactor, cofactor that is required not only for muscle contraction, not only for the bones, but calcium is going to be a cofactor that contribute to the formation of fibrin. We okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So with that, we finish our fat-soluble vitamins, the A, D, E, and K. Let's start with the water-soluble vitamins. The water-soluble vitamins, uh, vitamin C is the ascorbic acid. 
ascorbic acid is the ascorbic acid the other name that you must remember i will suggest to write down 10 times each group of names 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times okay vitamin c ascorbic acid this vitamin c c c c co co collagen c another c so they produce collagen vitamin c collagen is a protein as you already know very well right collagen is a protein that is elastic elastic protein properties is elastic collagen will be in any part of the body in the skin it could be in the cartilage in the connective tissue so that produces the elasticity of the structure collagen we have believe it or not in the bones bones con contain collagen too so the bones they have they're rigid but they have some flexibility too right otherwise it will be like very 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 hard will be brittle and will be broken very easy with whatever mechanical force so by the, with the collagen collagen is and the vitamin c in addition to that is a very potent antioxidant it's going to be a very potent antioxidant here we have the antioxidant functions so one of the problems that we have is what we call scurvy 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 we have petechia purpura bleeding gum so hemartrosis hemartrosis means bleeding in the articulation of the joints edema oliguria oliguria means a diminish of uh, um, a urine production neuropathy intracerebral hemorrhage and death smokers decrease production of smokers can produce pro, decrease production of of collagen because they sweep out all the vitamin c vitamin c is very important antioxidant very important antioxidant, and we need to have it every day because it's water soluble it can be diluted and screw with the urine very easy so that's why you need to have a vitamin c every day scurvy is important and uh, scurvy is these lesions that can happen in the mucus and in the skin so for example you see in the left upper we have some gums with some bleeding there could be vitamin c deficiency in the skin you have this ecchymosis of, of bruises just to give you an example about that and probably we already talk about this is that uh, in the past in the 1700s let's put it that way in the 1600s there was ships 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 coming from other continent to united states right so and the trip from england to here or from other areas about was three months what is the power that we use the wind power so the bales are going to move the ships and that take about three months three months from from one place to another place at the beginning many people was having a problem with scurvy because during the three months of continuous traveling right they don't have some nutrients like for example by is vitamin c and the vitamin c vitamin c is a uh, vitamin c is both basically in the oranges lemons lots apples right so and that that is a uh, and with this lack of products we do not have well this lack of products during the trip uh, lead into deficiency of vitamin c and this start to cause what we call scurvy this is scurvy is a lesion that happens in any place, place on the body, not only in the skin and the mucus, but inside the body, in the lungs, in the in the brain, in the muscles. Everywhere are potentially have risk for for bleeding. Okay, because the the vitamin C is a potent antioxidant, and basically the the structures the vessels will be destroyed and produce this bleeding and the patient die and the person die and the person person and the patient die because uh, internal hemorrhage the brain special kidneys hemorrhage so any place can be bleeding scurvy scurvy so that's why if you notice in the east coast uh, the houses they have by touching a, a tree of lemon it's very traditional in the united states to have a tree of lemon because they was they they want to have these sources of vitamin c because at that time they was traveling arriving to the east coast and they was having problems with the scurvy okay so that's why okay all right so we okay with that 
they can produce gastric irritation if you have toxic levels because the vitamin C is acid. Is vitamin C, if you see, is the ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid. So it means acid. Okay. Any question? No, sir. No, Dr. G. But we're at 12.22. Okay, all right, so you want the lunch break? Okay, let's do lunch break. Who said, uh, who was, uh, who's taking, oh, Chris, right? Chris. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's do it until 12.22, 30, 52, 55, you okay? Five yes. minutes to one. Okay, perfect, thank you, see you there. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.